project, and he is very busy being back home working on, on a, a big tender that we're doing together with the Ministry of Finance. Uh, so instead, you have to do it with me. Uh, I'm head of the data distribution at the Geodata Agency. Uh, I do have some of my skilled technical people here, so if you have technical in-depth questions to what I'm about to, to show you, uh, please come up here in the break and we'll take them afterwards, all right? Okay, um, what I'm going to talk about, I'll give you a short presentation about the Geodata Agency, who we are, and then I have two primary messages. Uh, I could speak for at least one hour of each of them, but one is the open data program that we have in Denmark, secondly, the data distribution platform, and then at the end I'll give you a glimpse of, of how I see the future. All right, I have 36 slides. We're already a bit behind, so uh, I'll rush through some of this. Uh, basically, the Geodata Agency, we are the National Mapping Agency, but we decided to get a new name. We realized we don't really produce maps anymore. We produce geodata. So we got a new name from January 1st. We got a new strategy, and we got a completely new organization. Uh, at the same time, I came into the picture. I joined January the 1st as well. Uh, I'm a land surveyor. Uh, background, specialized in GIS and, and, and uh, land management. Before that, I worked nine years with GIS software, both commercial and uh, a lot with open source software as well. All right, so this is a new organization, pretty traditional, but what you can really see from this is that we are a value chain or data-driven organization from the data uh, acquisition, data collection, to uh, data processing, data visualization, and uh, in the end, uh, using data application and uh, data distribution. So that's our new organization in short. All right, so the open data program. Um, from January the 1st, uh, uh, the whole government uh, real, uh, uh, released this open data program. It's called Good Basic Data for Everyone. It's the Ministry of Finance who are in, in charge of this, which obviously gives a lot of muscle uh, behind this. Having said that, they don't do this because they find spatial data and other uh, base data very interesting. Obviously, if you look at the first page, it's a driver for both growth and efficiency. If you look at it for business, for the private sector, it's growth. For the public sector, it's efficiency. So these are the two main drivers why we have released all our data. So we'll get into what kind of data it is. Well, this is overview of what we call the basic uh, public data. It's information about people. It's information about businesses. It's uh, a real property information. It's addresses. It's road networks. It's all the base data. And obviously, it's a lot more. It's auto photo, uh, elevation model, etc. And if you look at it, well, these data are actually ours. So, so we play a key role in this whole open data uh, initiative. <coughs> so what kind of data is free? Well, if you look at our data, topographical data, uh, base map, even our cadastral map is completely free. Uh, high resolution autophoto, this is our national 10 centimeter pixel resolution autophoto. Uh, it's digital elevation models, uh, even just uh, released um, our blue spot information about where rain will collect. Um, get back to that a bit later. And uh, I went to this quite interesting presentation yesterday with Arnulf. Arnulf, are you here? Oh, yeah, you're right there. So I can say our data are completely free to copy, change, and distribute. They're free to use together with other data sets, and it can be used commercially. There's actually really no string attached. There's one, however. We do like the people acknowledge that the data comes from us. When did they uh, get the data and, and how did they get it? Do they use the WFS servers? Do they bulk load some data? What do they do? So that's all we ask. It's not really much. And obviously that was a huge change of how we used to work before January the 1st. Okay. Uh, if you look at the data distribution platform, which uh, I'm in, in, in charge of, um, I could show you something like that, but that is a bit too complicated for this early morning. Instead, I'd like to say, well, we look at ourselves a bit like IKEA, all right? I mean, we don't distribute flat parcels with furniture, but we do distribute a lot, massive amounts of data. So if you look at IKEA, well, this is basically IKEA and their business model. Well, IKEA, they have a very nice showroom. If you like me, don't really know how to put a rock together with a couch and a coffee table, they have a showroom. 
we have that as well. We have a very nice refreshed web page where you can get all the information you really need. Uh, I must admit it's primarily in Danish, but uh, we are working on that. Um, you can subscribe to, to, to different feeds about information about uh, uh, status of the platform, etc. Um, IKEA also have a very nice web shop. We have that as well. Um, the web shop you can go in, log in, put all kind of information into your basket. You can have pre-generated data sets, national, nationwide data sets. Um, you can define your own data set in your own format, your own projection and collect it. And uh, before I, I worked for the geodata agency, I was a sales manager for Intergraph. And I can say it's a bit easier to sell your products when they're free. <laughs> I mean, you put all your data in the basket, you click check out, and it doesn't cost you anything. That's a huge advantage. We also have support for professional users. Uh, we have for uh, almost 10 years distributed our data using OGC services. We have uh, a web page where you can see all our different services, how to connect, uh, in, uh, you can get previews, you can get all the information you really need uh, in order to, to use your data in, in different OGC compliant uh, systems. We can also help, uh, help you bulk load or bulk import your data. We do have traditional FTP features, uh, primarily for uh, professional uses where you can uh, collect the whole uh, national data set uh, directly from our FTP. We're currently in beta test uh, with Atom feeds, so you can actually subscribe uh, to, to, to our feeds. So we'll tell you when part of the data is, is, is updated so you don't have to bulk load everything. We do have uh, information about how to use our data. And finally, I have a great team, some of them are here today, uh, really struggling and stretching themselves a bit like this photo <laughs> uh, in order to help our, help our customers, help our, our public sector customers, help our partners, etc. Obviously, this requires a bit of infrastructure. Uh, before January the 1st, we had around 100 web servers uh, showing the data. Uh, because the data was released, we uh, tried to scale up in time, uh, saying today we have 141 servers. Uh, we added some yes last week. I'm not really sure if they are into the 141. But, but if you look at that, that's quite a lot of servers. And, and on one hand side, I'm not really fond of having so much servers, but, but because our infrastructure provider is not an agency, that's who we work with, that's a strategic uh, a partner we work with. These are the kind of infrastructure they could actually provide to us. Um, don't take the number, like don't count the servers, it's just to give you an idea of, of how the infrastructure is, is divided. Um, we use open source for, I would say, the majority of our distribution platform. Uh, uh, but we don't solve use open source. So we have a policy saying we use the components that are best for what they do. So for example, we use Map Server for WMS. Uh, we use, uh, at the moment, GeoWebCache for WMTS. Uh, we are currently looking into to MapCache to see whether that would be, perform even better or not. Uh, we use Map Server as well for web coverage services. Uh, we use Snowflake, that's a commercial product. Uh, anybody here from Snowflake? <coughs> ah, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a commercial product. Uh, used it. They are very good at supporting uh, Inspire uh, schema models, so that's why we chose them. Uh, having said that, uh, we still use GeoServer for, for some other things. Uh, the rest so keys, something we developed from scratch. Uh, they are not OGC compliant, but they're actually taking a massive load uh, every day. Um, and we just released a new version, I think it was yesterday. Uh, then we have uh, quite a few servers of a product called Splunk. It's a commercial product as well. Uh, some people call it business intelligence. I hate that work. It, it's basically, uh, we use it to digest our massive log files. I think we produce 16 gigabytes of log files every month. Yeah, measure is, is nodding around that. So that's, every time we have a request, we log it in order for us to, to complete that yes to say what kind of information is used, which services, which feature class, and which services from which users uh, are done that. So we use uh, Splunk uh, to, to, to analyze that information. Uh, Geo Network uh, for catalog services. We also have quite a few servers for our file-based data for our web shop and, and FTP. Uh, we have some switch boards uh, that takes care of, let's say, whenever a request enters the system, we have a switch board who, who, who logs information, makes sure so that, that 
you have the username uh, and password needed, etc. Obviously, we have a few web servers as well. Uh, have a number of development and test servers. Uh, and then finally, we have different uh, kind of application servers. Um, we still uh, use a little Ionix, a little um, uh, RGIS server that we're currently migrating, but they're still running. And um, we also use, or about to implement, uh, Puppet for automatic deployment uh, of our servers. Unfortunately, we haven't put Puppet into production yet. And I really regret that last week. Um, last Thursday, um, we more or less uh, moved the front page of one of the nationwide newspapers. It says, like, look if your house is going to be flooded the next time there's extreme rain. See, that's something people could really relate to. Uh, I was at a conference, and I could just, like, got um, a tweet coming in saying we were getting more and more uh, <laughs> flooded with requests. Um, we work very, very hard, I mean, to, to keep up. Um, in the peak hours, we got, I think it was 317 requests coming in per second. That's double to triple the amount that we typically get. So, uh, especially Jonas sitting here was very busy that Thursday. Okay, a bit back to, to, to the, the data-driven or the value chain organization. Um, this is more or less how we look at, at the way we do things uh, within the due date agency. Uh, if you look from the left to the right, you, obviously we have the, the data collection, we have Q&A on data, we have a number of different production systems, uh, each, let's say, tailor-suited um, for, for a different production uh, environment. So cadastral data is produced in one system, I think it's geomedia-based, uh, topographical mapping produced in another system, etc. cetera. Uh, but what we have worked with for quite a number of years is that, that all the data coming from the different production system will all go into one we call the Geo Data Bank. It's called LDS uh, up here. Uh, we are heavy users of FME. I talked to you about that earlier. Um, uh, for, I mean, harmonizing data, making sure that, that uh, we, we, we have the right uh, distribution data models whenever data uh, leaves the house. Um, and that is the Geo Data Bank. That's where we keep the master data. We also have derived data in there um, before it, it's, it's going into the distribution uh, environment. It's called KF Chains. Uh, that's an old screenshot, and I didn't have the original, so I couldn't change the Danish text. I apologize. Uh, so, so that's how data is, is, is moved through the system. <coughs> Recently, uh, because the whole geodata bank is based around an Oracle uh, 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 application cluster, uh, and that's not about to change. But, but we, we realized uh, a half year ago or so that we needed to be able to scale our database platform as well. So what we did is that we introduced PostGIS um, as replicated uh, distribution uh, databases. Um, I'm not quite sure how many PostGIS we have. Uh, I believe we have a master and, and a number of slaves under that. That's what you see here in the bottom. Um, I'll come a bit back to that later. Uh, if you're more interested in, in, in knowing how did we change from, from, from solely using Oracle to also using PostGIS. Uh, I could say you could spend some time tomorrow afternoon in the lunch break. I know it's a bad time, but uh, two of my colleagues, Ole Nielsen and, and Jonas Nielsen, will give a presentation telling you about uh, our experience, uh, what went good, what went not that good, and, 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 and how, how would we recommend you to do it. All right, so. Obviously, the open data program uh, changed our world quite dramatically. Um, these are the, 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 the recent statistics I have. And if you look at, at the way um, uh, spikes here, that's the number of uses that we have. And you can see it's constantly growing. I mean, today we have almost 7,500 users. Before January the 1st, we had a few hundreds. Uh, I'm not really sure why it keeps growing. I mean, we said, well, it's going to grow the first quarter, and then it's going to be stabilized. But it's still growing quite significantly. Um, and and the, the dots on top of it is actually the number of orders we get in our web shop. An order could be a, a range of data sets. So it's basically one basket is one. So we have more than 30,000 data orders uh, coming in here uh, until now. So all these new users, obviously, we have very happy users. This is uh, Peter Borsen. Uh, he is very active in the OpenStreetMap uh, community in Denmark. Uh, he actually came knocking on the door January the 2nd. Uh, 
the first day we opened the doors and he collected two uh, times two terabyte disks. Uh, he thought it was way easier than, than start to, to get all the data from the web shop. So uh, all our data is, is uh, entering OpenStreetMap as well. Um, obviously that can give a lot of new information into to the OpenStreetMap product. Obviously Google and Bing, uh, even Apple, they have our data as well. Um, I'm not gonna say much about that. Um, demand is still increasing. Uh, July, which is in the middle of the summer vacation, we hit a new record. Um, we had 120, almost 120 million requests in that month. Uh, that is more or less the same amount of requests that we had for a whole year back in 2008. Um, and people who know me know we like cake. Uh, so uh, we always celebrate whenever we, we reach a new, um, new, uh, a new, new limit. Um, if you put that into perspective, well, this is a, a, a research institute showing all kind of Danish um, uh, websites, media, how many page, you can see the right uh, here is, is how many uh, page views they have per month. The first one is the Danish version of eBay. Uh, they're actually owned by eBay, but that's the Danish version of eBay. The two next, XWDCO and BTDK, uh, are the two main sleazy tabloid newspapers in Denmark. I mean, like, like that, these kind of newspapers, right? But if you look at it, we would actually come in third. Obviously, I know web search requests are not page, page views, but anyway, we're actually in the top league. Since this is an international conference, you could even say, well, <laughs> I, I, I'll keep it on mute, all right? Uh, this is the most viewed YouTube video ever. It has roughly 1.5 billion uh, views. Uh, later this month, we will reach the 1 billion request uh, within 2013. So we actually aim to reach the same amount of requests on our web services uh, within this year. And please remember, Denmark is a small country. You only have around 5 million people. So uh, I believe it, it, it's quite massive uh, interest and quite massive data amounts we're actually pushing out uh, through the infrastructure. Okay, the future. If I try to, to give you a, a, um, a glimpse into to, to my future and the future of our data distribution uh, platform, uh, I need to go a little back to, to, to the open data uh, program, the good basic data for everyone. If you look into that, you come into, uh, I think it's chapter nine. Uh, it, that's it actually in English, so you can go ahead and, and have a look in it. Uh, it says that, that, that one of the initiatives in this program is to build a common distribution infrastructure. Uh, uh, on top of all the, the, the basic data within the country. Um, a common distribution solution, I call it a common uh, distribution platform. Uh, I regard it as a lighthouse. It's a completely new uh, infrastructure. Every uh, governmental agency who has basic data will uh, be pushing their data into that. So, so everybody using basic data in Denmark only have one place to go with one uh, common API, with, with one common way of, of, of collecting data. Um, the process, and uh, that's why Modern isn't here. We are currently uh, in a competitive dialogue with five selected companies. Uh, as I said in the beginning, it's the Ministry of Finance who are uh, in charge of this. We are just one out of five agencies uh, in, in this uh, uh, tender. Uh, some of them international players, and some of them are uh, uh, large Danish uh, system integrators. Uh, I do know we have some subcontractors sitting in the back row up there. So that's why I'm not going into very deep details. Um, the process, well, the material was available in, in, in June. That's why I really uh, appreciate it not being uh, a commercial provider, but now I'm sitting on the other side of the table. So I could go on my summer vacation knowing that people were sweating and working very hard out there. Uh, since it's a competitive dialogue, we do have a number of, of dialogue phases. It's quite time consuming, but we believe it's, it's giving us a lot of value because Building this kind of, of lighthouse uh, have never been done before uh, uh, ever uh, in Denmark. So we need to have this dialogue in order to, to make sure that we're actually uh, putting the right um, uh, demands and requests in there. Uh, but the, the one date that, that's worth mentioning is, is May 9th next year. That's actually when we uh, expect uh, to sign a contract with one of these uh, five uh, system integrators. 
Um, so we have a big review team. Morten Lindegård is, is, is part of that. Uh, they are sitting in a, I would almost say, air sealed room within the Ministry of Finance uh, because there are, uh, it's a competitive dialogue. There's a lot, obviously a lot of things, uh, precautions to be, to be made to make sure that everything is completely confidential, uh, completely documented, uh, and so on. Uh, the reason I have that photo, if there's two reasons behind that. First of all, I mean, the material they're getting is massive, so I, in my head, visualize them as people like going. Uh, it's definitely not garbage that come in, but it's huge amount of pages with solutions descriptions, with prices, and they're really digesting it bit by bit. The other reason is uh, it says Beast up there, and Beast is actually the big review tool uh, that the Ministry of Finance uses. There's a big uh, Excel spreadsheet calculating everything, so, so that's why we have the Beast here as well. Okay. When we have this common distribution uh, or common data platform, uh, what will that do uh, to an agency like ours? Um, basically, we will keep all the production system complete as they are. The geodata bank will be completely untouched. But what we'll do is we'll make a uh, uh, well, uh, uh, slight uh, cut. We'll move our um, uh, current map distribution platform. We'll move our um, PostGIS databases into the Lighthouse. And then we will make sure that, that the data is always updated. All right, I'll just have to speak a bit louder. <laughs> um, obviously, before you move, I mean, that's something that, that we need to do next year. And I guess everybody who have tried to move at home knows that if you take all your garbage, all the things you have uh, uh, um, uh, in the ceiling, it's going to be a mess. So we, earlier this year, started to, to make some, uh, to, to clean up. Uh, to look what kind of systems don't we need to move, what are the, the, the system uh, dependencies, do all our system use web services, do some of them go, let's say, sidewards into the database. So we made a complete mapping of, of all our system uh, and, and how they're integrated uh, to, get us, uh, to give us an idea of, of how our current system landscape looks like. I mean, remember, the current distribution platform has evolved over 10 years. And I guess everybody who's been living in their house for 10 years know there's a lot of stuff going uh, uh, somewhere else in the basement or, or in the ceiling. Okay, and what's our role going to be in, in, in this uh, common distribution platform? Well, obviously, we're going to be one of the five basic data authorities being responsible for our data, for our web services. Uh, but we're also going to get a new role uh, I'm not really sure how I should translate it, but, but the Danish word is, is, is operator, uh, which made me think of that photo. Definitely that's not how we can do it. But, but, but the operator is going to, on, on the way, on the behalf of, of the Ministry of Finance and all the other basic uh, data authorities, going to make sure uh, that we're moving in the right direction, that, we, uh, that the, the, the company we select to deliver is, this uh, infrastructure is, is going to live up to, to uh, um, what we ask them to do, to make sure that the data will be used, to make sure that the platform will evolve as technology evolves, uh, just as uh, demands evolve, etc. So that's giving us a quite central role in the whole open data program, and not only for spatial, geospatial data, but for all basic data. I'm getting away down here, it's five minutes. All right, so wh why do we have this uh, quite interesting uh, and important role to play. Well, there are several reasons, and, and a few of them is, is what I'm going to end up uh, with here. Uh, if you look at the, 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 uh, the expected data volumes, I mean, the top one is the total. The one just below that, that's our data volume. So 95% of all the data in the, 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 this uh, common uh, distribution platform, that's our data. Uh, so that, that's at least, that's one good reason. The second is that we have a very well-established uh, partner program. Uh, yeah, I put Septima up there. That's the newest partner. They're sitting in the back row with hangovers or? No, OK, good. Uh, we have almost 25 commercial partners that we've been working with for, for uh, quite a number of years. They are typical commercial GIS providers, engineering companies working with open source, uh, smaller uh, land surveying companies also doing a bit of, of, of Cal and, and GIS. Um, and we've been serving data since 2002. And these are actually some of the slides for the very first uh, partner seminars or, or partner um, yeah, seminars we had back in 2002. Uh, we've had that 
like an annual conference. Uh, we had that this year as well. I think we were 120 people uh, this year. Uh, in the beginning, there was around 20. Uh, I was host for the first time. Not really. It's quite hard to see. I'm hiding in, in, in the back. I guess I should be standing in, in the front, but uh, anyway. Um, the last thing I believe is one of the reasons why we actually were chosen to, to play this operator uh, role in the future is that we've actually been able to, to, to keep a, a very high uh, availability and keep a very stable platform. Yes, March was not one of the best months, I agree, but if you look uh, ever since, we are hitting 99.99 .99 and even 100% uh, uptime, uh, which is quite amazing and, and it's only possible because I have a very amazing team uh, being able to, to do whatever is needed. Uh, I even think Mesha took her bike in a snowstorm into to our office uh, to restart some servers when we had a huge winter storm. All right. Uh, any questions? I'm just going to leave, uh, let me see, this one here. Bad resolution. So this is uh, our web page. Uh, we have a counter showing how many hits we get per second. It says the first one hits today, hits per second, and hits per year. And we already, we are hitting one billion in around uh, 12, 13 days from now. Obviously, we're going to have a huge cake within the, the agency. I already have made sure that we get another digit in the counter so it doesn't go back to zero. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a round of applause. We have, time, we have time for a couple of quick questions, and really not surprisingly, this guy has, uh, has one. Huh. Uh, how, many, how many requests per month, you said, your, your top month? Uh, we get, uh, July, uh, we got 120 million requests on our web services. And how many of your 143 servers, how many of those are web servers? I mean, uh, I think... Well, the 120 million requests uh, is, I can't really remember how the distributes, but it's always WMTS requests is, is quite a bit, and WMS is also uh, quite a bit. Okay. Um, and then our geo keys, geo keys is, is, is geo coding, reverse geo coding, uh, uh, and stuff like that. So do you have some kind of a queuing system where like uh, the order comes in, you go do data processing, and then they get some kind of key and they come back and they can download it or do is to be honest, I'm not quite sure synchronous. how it works. I do know we have something in our switchboard, but Misha is, is, is shaking with the head. So a specific queuing system, no, we don't have that. Okay. There's another question there. Okay, maybe you can do that uh, in the <laughs> break. Yeah? Very interesting presentation, and we are all enjoying ourselves here at the Phosphor G. So, question <laughs> to you. It seems to me that you are in a wonderful position to help the community, all of us, all the interested open source GS uh, enthusiasts. Can you say, are, are you going to, it looks like you, you would be in a wonderful position to kind of keep it going and, and take your position and your strengths and, and make us all uh, work with the data and find new ways to use it. So, so any thoughts on that? I am in a wonderful position. <laughs> um, I, I did two comments to that. First of all, as I said, I mean, I think 90% of the software and, and applications we use are open source. Uh, we don't have like a strategy saying we should only use open source or not. Uh, the, the other thing is that, that as we are currently in this uh, tender process where we're getting five different companies uh, to, to give their bid uh, on, on a new solution, uh, obviously some of them uh, is not open source providers. So if, if they are the ones we're going to select together with the Ministry of Finance and the other authorities, uh, we're probably going to use less open source software in, in that platform. Um, but obviously, I mean, we have an audit. Uh, um, um, we're working together with, with the other uh, Nordic uh, mapping authorities uh, on some of the open source uh, applications. The, the Geodata Info, our national uh, 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 well-used network, our uh, catalog services, we have been developing with the other Nordic uh, countries. Hi, uh, you said you've chosen Splunk as a logging framework. It looks like an awesome framework, but it's proprietary and probably quite expensive. Why did you choose that over other options? Um, yes, it does cost some money. Uh, it's definitely not free. Uh, we chose it because we have, um, we have statistics 
for many, many years. I said we would generate 16 gigabyte of log files every month, and we've done that for, for many years. Uh, and in, in a benchmark, we, we saw that, that Splunk was actually able to, to do that for us. Um, so that's why we, we're using that um, it's simple benchmark. And, and the amount of money that, that, that we spent for Splunk software is actually not a lot compared to all the beautiful information we're getting out of it. Uh, yes, uh, hello. Just a quick question. Um, has there been any research into the benefits of this in respect to the growth and efficiency in the economy? There are a huge business case behind this uh, in, in very great details. Uh, we are currently, I think we're going to, uh, the pro is going to end on Monday. We have currently tender out for making uh, a benchmark study uh, of how did, 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 did uh, our data do before January the 1st. How are they doing now, and how will they do in a number of, of years? So we have a huge uh, responsibility to really show all the, the value coming out of this. So we have this huge benchmark study uh, coming quite soon. I can send you the numbers uh, if, if you're interested into going into the details. Okay, I'll take a last question because he was mentioned. I guess <laughs> he, he, he earns a question. It's, it's more like a suggestion. Uh, many national mapping agencies support OSGEO, so have you considered becoming a sponsor? Or if you haven't considered, I suggest that would be a great idea because you're using a lot of open source, so maybe that would also help you get more information back into your organization. We are, uh, I think there's, is it tomorrow? Uh, we are uh, looking or, or meeting about uh, making a Danish uh, OSGEO chapter. Uh, I signed up. Uh, Showed my interest, I think, two months ago. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're definitely looking okay. into that. That's a good, it's a very good uh, over, uh, bridge into my uh, finalizing this because I'll have to cut it off here because some birds of feathers are, are going to start or actually have started already. And there's coffee break. So, I want uh, you to join me in another applause for our two speakers.